Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Anya, and today I'm going to show you how I paint an eye using watercolor and oil paint. For the watercolor painting, I'll be using a 4 by 6 inches Artmate 300 GSM watercolor paper. And for the oil painting, I prime a 5 by 6 inches Paco Possibilities Multimedia Sheet with gesso and let it dry for extra protection as oil can damage paper over time. I started off by doing a light sketch of the eye. It is very important to use very little pressure on your pencil when drawing an outline as watercolor is transparent and a dark pencil mark could easily show through the paint. Please give my video a like if you want me to post a step-by-step -step drawing tutorial for the eyes. I'm using Sennelier Aqua Mini watercolor for this painting. And I usually start off by applying a light wash of cool colors like blues and greens for the darker parts of the skin to create a more realistic effect. Please remember that the white of the eyeballs aren't usually white because your eyelids and eyelashes cast a shadow and reflection over it. For the skin, I used a mixture of yellow and vermilion or any red, then subdued it with a little bit of blue. Make sure you only use a teeny bit of the blue as a mixture of warm and cool colors can create a muddy shade if the portions are not right. Always start with the lightest color you see on your reference and slowly add layers of the darker shades over the light ones. When I started watercolor, I really didn't like it so much as it was difficult for me to control the paint. But later on, as I kept practicing, I learned a few techniques of how to use them better. Like if you don't want colors to mix together, you have to make sure the painted area dries first before you paint the area next to it. You can also control the amount of water to make the paint more manageable by using the right brush. Make sure you are not pressing your brush too hard on the paper so you don't damage it as well. I think one of the most common mistakes beginners make which I have made in the past as well, is to treat watercolor like acrylic paint and just wipe it on the paper instead of using water to guide the paint on where it has to go. So again, depending on the subject you're painting, using the right brush helps. For the darker shades of the skin, I usually mix more of the same shade as the first wash but with less water. I would either add more reds for the midtones or blues for the shadows, but then again, be careful with the blue as it can darken the mixture easily. I would usually put the concentration of the paint in darkest areas first, then brush the edges towards the lighter parts with water to create a gradient effect. When painting the eyelashes, you have to make sure that the surface you will paint on is dry. Use a brush with a fine tip that doesn't hold too much water as that would make the lashes too thick. It is very important that you observe your reference carefully when you paint eyelashes. A common mistake beginners make is to assume that the eyelashes only go one direction. They don't. So make sure you're looking at your reference carefully. To make thin lines, hold your brush straight and you would only need to use a very light pressure. Use a scrap paper to practice on first before applying it to your painting. To create more depth, I added a layer of watercolor pencils for the darker areas after the paint has dried, but this part is optional. For the oil painting, I'm using Basics 12 Color Oil Paints. You can sketch the eye first as I did with the watercolor painting if you're still new to oil painting or use the oil paint directly and paint the outline. I realized using multimedia paper for oil painting feels very different from a canvas. Oil paint doesn't stick to paper the same way so I had to adjust and thin the paint a little bit by dipping my brush in a mixture of linseed oil and turpentine to make it more manageable. With watercolor, my approach is to work in layers and always go from light to dark shades. But with oil painting, a friend has taught me to use a blocking technique, which is like painting the shadows, midtones, and highlights where you see them placed on your reference before blending them together. 
I applied the same techniques as I did with watercolor when mixing colors, only this time, instead of diluting the paint to make lighter shades, I used white. I think it's very helpful to pre-mix the colors you will use as it helps with the blocking technique. I rarely use black to darken a shade. Instead, I would mix blue to any warm color to make darker browns or grays. I use a mixture of white and yellow for the lightest parts. I would then take a bit of that and add orange or red with a bit of blue for the mid-tones. For the shadows, I either would mix reds and oranges with brown and blue. If you have any more questions about color mixing, please leave me a comment below and I will try my best to answer them. I prefer to use flat brushes when painting in acrylic or oil as it's easier to create smooth edges. I'm using a brush set which I think only cost about $2 for 8 flat brushes, which is not bad. For the finer details though, I use a detail brush that I got from my nail art brush sets because it's the only fine brush I could find in my collection of hoarded art supplies. <laughs> Please do not use the same brush you use for watercolor with oil paint as it could damage your brush significantly. So here, I'm just blending and refining areas with shadows and highlights to create more contrast. The contrast between each shade creates an illusion of detail, which means you don't necessarily have to paint every line to create more definition for your painting. For the eyelashes, I used the linseed oil and turpentine mixture to thin the paint again. Since oil paint comes as a thick paste, it was easier for me to paint thin lines if the paint is diluted. Again, observe your reference carefully when painting eyelashes. I really like painting in watercolor, but after practicing oil paint, I began to love this medium as well because of its smooth finish. I used to get so frustrated with oil because I couldn't figure out how to use it properly, but thankfully, practice makes progress. So that's it for this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to receive notifications. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!